let's welcome in our uh, morning guest uh, Siddharth Sadani now joins us uh, this morning Gorang Shah is uh, with us as well as Manas Cheswar is joining us Gorang let me first start uh, with you uh, what are the picks that you have well from an investment perspective Pankaj we have identified two themes first one is Ashok Leyland pure CV play uh, close to about 70 75 levels it's been consolidating moving close to 80 levels but unable to take that off decisively though we saw the closing at somewhere close to about 81 uh, quite optimistic on the GST rollout. Well, date is unknown, but uh, definitely per, coupled with that, uh, the uh, phased out uh, period of 10 to 15 years for CV could augur well for this particular company. And of course, defense is also throwing in positivity along with the export market. 115 from a long term point of view is the target for uh, Ashok Leyland. And the next one is uh, consu consumer discretionary spend, the theme, that's uh, Asian Paints. Uh, yes, crude oil boil has put a little bit of uh, spoke in the wheel for the entire paint industry. But we are quite positive on this particular company given the kind of market penetration, market size, number of products that they have to offer. Not only on the household side but also from the industrial and automotive segment they have seen traction on the uptick. Last two quarters encouraging to see high end margin products uh, seen volume growth thereby we believe that once the liquidity situation stabilizes at ground level. I think you will definitely see spending power coming back and the fact is that this particular company is present in the domestic market and it has got also got sizable presence in the overseas market as well. 1110 is the target on Asian paints from a long term point of view. Alright, so we've got Ashok Leland, Asian paints as picks from Gorang. Uh, Siddharth, what are your top picks? Good morning. Well, the first idea would be from the cement pack as we are seeing that cement is on a roll. And what we have observed as per the channel checks, uh, southern part of the country has a volume uh, traction. We are seeing volume traction in uh, southern India as well as in north India there is a price stabilization. So looking at these factors, we like Ramco cement. Uh, uh, on the back of uh, volume front, the kind of volume surge they are seeing, they have gone up uh, 19% in terms of volume surge in the last quarter, although the impact of demonetization would be felt little mild only uh, for this company as we are seeing that volumes have started recovering from December onwards. Uh, Ramco is uh, is one of the company where uh, Abitta Pertan is around uh, the highest in the industry of around 1500 rupees, whereas what we believe is giving a 11 times FY19 EV to Abitta, uh, implying that uh, $200 EV per ton. Uh, we like Ramco Cement uh, uh, with a target of around 718. Uh, the second idea would be from NBFC space, although there are, there are a lot of school of thoughts coming in that uh, uh, NBFC may be negative for medium to long term. Uh, we, uh, we don't believe in that. We believe that NBFC will be again the flavor of the market once things are stabilized and dust is settled. So we like Bajaj Finserve amongst this. It is the fifth. Uh, uh, it has grown for in last four years of around 25% CAGR. Uh, what we are believing, uh, believe that the subsidiary Bajaj Finance is doing uh, will be doing fairly good going forward. On top of it, the Bajaj Alliance, the Alliance uh, GV is also fifth largest GV. So it seems uh, the uh, insurance. Uh, segment is uh, really growing, uh, the entire industry has been growing. So giving a 2.3 uh, price to book value, we like uh, Bajaj Finserv in the NBFC space and we believe uh, it would be quite positive with a medium to long term perspective. Manas, what about you, your top picks? Uh, three buy calls, first is uh, a buy call on Granules India where uh, uh, I think last week's stock made a hammer pattern on the daily chart, on the, on the weekly charts and Yesterday it broke uh, uh, the resistance of 109 with higher volumes. Now it is trading near to its 50-day moving average, but looking at the pattern, I think it can break its 50-day uh, moving, uh, moving average, and uh, the stock has potential to test 117. So here you can take a long call, keep the stop loss below 109. Second call is a buy call on uh, Jan irrigation, where uh, I think few days back stock took support near to 200-day moving average and bounced back sharply. Uh, yesterday it broke its 50-day uh, moving average with uh, decent volume. So I am expecting further up, up move in January irrigation. Is stock can test 95. So one can buy it with a stop loss of 89. And last one is a buy call on uh, Century Textile where stock was facing a lot of resistance in the range of 800 and 820 for last uh, I think one month. But yesterday it broke that range uh, with great volume. So 
Uh, you may see further recovery in uh, Century Textile. Its stock can test 880. So one can buy it with a stop loss of 820. Some of the stocks that will be in uh, news or will be reacting to news flow. So firstly, JSW Steel. It's a 1650 rupees stock, but it will become a 166 rupees stock. So it goes X split uh, in the ratio of 10 is to 1. Uh, that's what uh, you know. One is expected. That's the pre-open price at the bottom of your screen. It was sixteen hundred something yesterday. It's now one sixty-six, about one percent. After, of course, that is adjusting for the ten is to one split. Uh, as expected, HDFC has also cut home loan rates by about zero point four five percent. Their new home loan rate for uh, seventy-five lakhs or up to seventy-five lakhs uh, stands for about eight point seven percent. So, uh, or, you know, making it as competitive as uh, they could versus some of the other cuts that we've seen. Uh, Glenmark, it's still you know one drug where they have started to see some discovery phase one trial has gone through markets tend to price in drugs only after phase two of recovery actually goes through so, but it's still a development it's still a uh, study that they are doing now they'll uh, pro so process this study on some of the patients uh, nmdc has raised iron ore prices by 6.7 percent i think it just came in about two minutes before market closing yesterday uh, so you know that uh, could have an impact on uh, nmdc uh, nmdc have raised prices by 6.72 percent it just came in within the closing uh, minutes uh, yesterday but uh, however NMDC MDC could also react to this today morning. All right, there are a few other mid-cap stocks uh, that are in the news as well. Uh, uh, Pankaj spoke of NMDC, now Manganese Ore uh, India Limited, MOIL, that's hiked its ferro-grade ore prices by 10% from January 1. Uh, it has hiked the prices of all fines by 15% from January 1 and even the electronic, uh, electrolytic uh, manganese dioxide prices have been raised by 5%. Then we have NBCC, the board meets today to consider a bonus issue. And in the sugar space, which has been buzzing, Balram Puccini uh, will consider buyback of shares worth 175 crore rupees. In the textile space, Vardhaman Textiles has a buyback window open from today till January 17. The company is looking to buy back 61.3 lakh shares at 1,150 rupees a share. Then there's Celebrity Fashions. The board is meeting today to issue either pref uh, preference shares or warrants to promoters. Uh, and the board meeting will actually happen on uh, uh, January 6th. So these are some of the stocks that we are keeping a track of. Uh, Pankaj, uh, now we've started seeing even more competitive pressures coming into the telecom space. Absolutely, Anisha. And you know, it, it's going to be a developing story at least till March, till you have Reliance Geo's welcome offer going on. So yesterday, uh, in terms of price action, Bharti was down 2.3, Idea was down 2. Most of these losses came in in the last uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes of trading session where you got news flow that Airtel has announced a new offer where they'll give free incremental data for users. This is applicable on both prepaid as well as postpaid customers and offer is aimed towards relatively high ARPU subscription. Now, that had not happened till now. Offer can be availed by non-Airtel users as well. For the next 12 months, uh, they would get free if they switch over to Airtel 4G. Now, some of the initial reactions coming in, Morgan Stanley says expect disruption to continue because of Geo and the pricing that uh, they would relieve, uh, reveal in uh, the month of April. Industry continues to remain challenging. Ongoing tariff wars is a very, very big concern for the industry. City has their buy on uh, Bharti, but that's purely because of valuation and the strength of balance sheet, where their target price is 365. They expect data realizations to drop further. Airtel, however, or that's Bharti, remains one of the best place in the industry. The other players where revenue is not that great, uh, they could face some problem because of Geo and uh, the sort of offers that uh, Geo is, uh, uh, Geo is uh, giving. Uh, Gorang, any view on uh, telecom and you know the offers that are coming in? It is something which was largely expected. Well, undoubtedly, because with the kind of uh, offer that you saw from Reliance Geo, first it was the welcome offer, then it got translated into a happy new year offer and extended till 31st March 2017. And I hope that that was the end of it because uh, that should not get transformed into something else and that will depend upon the size and structure of the offer. But, uh, you know, the assumption by fundamental analysts like us was that once this free period was over by Reliance Geo, uh, pricing would come back and that would lead to a little bit of stability in terms of earnings. But that has got wiped up up, up until 31st March 2017. And uh, the fact also remains, Pankaj, is that though these services are free for the subscribers, for the company there is at least a small cost attached to it. So how long you are able to sustain, that's a big question mark. And the question over here is, Pankaj, that since the launch of Reliance Geo, how much of impact in terms of these charges that Reliance Geo will have to bear and what will be the quantum of that is something unknown as of now 
I think we should get clarity once we have the clarity from the management as well. But incumbents like uh, other competitors, Vodafone unlisted entity, Idea, uh, Bharti Airtel listed entity amongst Reliance Communication. I think for them, the visibility of earning is just got pushed back by about two or three quarters more. Uh, having spoken about telecom, let's prudent on my part to give a disclosure that we are positive on Idea and Bharti. And one more thing, Pankaj, I think at the end of all this, you know, hodgepodge uh, and uh, m and which I believe very strongly will happen. We've seen already some part of it unfold. Uh, you will have at least three or four players maximum standing tall who are able to withstand this competition. And they will be able to get a larger pie of the market. Right. Uh, and so the larger players or players with good balance sheet strength should emerge as big winners. Yeah. So if I, if I want to preempt that and jump the gun, well, Reliance, Geo, Vodafone, Idea, uh, these are primarily the and Bharti Airtel. These are primarily the four players that might exist at the end of all this competition and, uh, you know, uh, survival of the fittest, if you will. Right. Uh, Manas, uh, any view on Bharti? Earlier, we've seen every time around 300, 290, the stock tends to reverse back. Uh, see, uh, all the three uh, telecom stocks are looking weak on the charts, especially Bharti, where uh, yesterday stock uh, tested its 50-day moving average, but it could not sustain on high levels and witness lot of selling pressure. I am expecting further downside in Bharti. I think stock can again test uh, 290. So here definitely one can go short with the stop loss of uh, 309. Right. Um, and Pankaj, it's uh, ironic that uh, Bharti Airtel has actually been crying foul saying that, um, uh, you know, Jio uh, uh, is doing a predatory pricing and they themselves are now back into the game doing the same thing that the competitors are doing. But let's move on and uh, talk about uh, the year 2017. Credit Suisse has come out with a note on what they see in India. They are saying that they see 12 to 15 months of disruption ahead. Uh, and the start of GST should also be disruptive for a few quarters. The recent rate cuts may not revive credit growth. We just heard banks cutting their MCLRs and this is maybe not enough to uh, revive the credit growth. They expect a slowdown in real estate and they see continued policy risk and uncertainties in India. They feel that the beneficiaries of low interest rates um, despite all of this, should do well. The top picks uh, for uh, 2017 include HCL Tech, LIC Housing, Tech Mahindra, Sipla, Tara Motors. And uh, some of the stocks which they think will really underperform this year include Ambuja Cement, Bar uh, Bajaj Finance, Asian Paints and Ultratech Cement. So these are some of the stocks they'll be uh, uh, keeping a watch on. Right, uh, we'll watch out for some of these stocks and what happens about three minutes to go uh, for markets to open. Uh, Gorang, another important development has been what HDFC has done or what SBI has done. Uh, do you think this uh, rate war would mean that uh, banks or NBFCs could underperform? Well, first the complaint was, Pankaj, that the banks are not passing on. And now that they are passing on in whatever manner they are doing, the concern is that the margins would get impacted. Definitely, yes. I mean, you see the, the kind of... Uh, you know, rate reduction that we've seen starting from 0 0.40 going up to 0 0.90. And maybe our view, you know, uh, as a brokerage house uh, stands that by till 31st March 2017, you might see either one or two rate cuts come through depending upon the de domestic data points where they stay, especially with respect to the inflation. That could be in form of 25, 25 basis point uh, by 31st March. And in that scenario, you will have more uh, pass on coming through. So maybe for a quarter or two, you will see uh, the margins of uh, housing finance companies and some of the banks coming under pressure depending upon their cost of borrowing and cost of lending. Point number, point number two, for housing finance companies, I am more optimistic because of the correction in real estate uh, prices, uh, both residential and commercial, more so on the residential side. And by the virtue of this real estate bill and whatever other reforms the government is trying to put in, I think you are going to see a major shake-up in the entire real estate pack wherein the bad boys are going to get wiped out and good ones will stand to get a larger market share. Uh, so yes, from a long-term point of view, remain positive on selective banks, public-private both, NBFCs, uh, HFCs and MFCs, we remain positive. Siddharth, uh, quickly a view on mortgage lenders. Competition is likely to increase?
course, the competition is likely to increase, but what we believe is uh, we still continue to like uh, housing finance companies like SAF LIC Housing Finance, uh, some companies like uh, Divan Housing where the valuations are quite uh, attractive at the current state and we believe that LIC Housing Finance will keep doing good uh, on the back of the low housing and even the cost of capital is coming down for the company. So we keep, uh, we continue liking these companies. Right, just about 30, 35 seconds remaining for markets to open. Uh, all of these housing finance companies uh, should be in uh, focus and also what's happening with the telecom name. Plus some of the metal companies like NMDC, Moil, all of that uh, could be in focus. No major events today lined up for any of these companies, but we're starting to get a lot of previews. So Cement, Pharma, IT, which are the first ones, you know, generally uh, to report. All of these, uh, you know, would start to price in what's coming into Q3. Of course, Q3 itself is a big question mark with demonetization and what is the sort of impact. But as the reports tend to come in, uh, you tend to see price action into some of these uh, names. Uh, uh, that's uh, the first trades that uh, you can see. 8 points half of the Nifty, 8,200 uh, on the first tick and about 26,678 uh, for the Sensex. Uh, ITC is down about a rupee. Reliance is 50 pesa higher. Sun Pharma, 1 rupee on the higher side. Tata Motors fell in the last 30 minutes, so today is trying to recover. BPCL and the entire oil marketing companies did very well yesterday and today they are falling down. Bharti Airtel was the top loser yesterday. Would not be surprised if it's among the top losers today as well. Down about a percent in the first tick, 85,000 shares traded. JSW Steel, of course, is a reaction to what's happening to their stock split. So 0.8% higher, 165 uh, Odd for uh, JSW Steel, HDFC Bank has cut rates, or rather HDFC has cut rates. Uh, HDFC Bank is at 1,186, even HDFC uh, would be in focus. Glenmark has got uh, uh, one step closer to one of the drugs, but again, it's still far. It's still the first phase that we're looking at. NMDC, 1% higher, reacting to the news flow regarding what's happening with, uh, you know, its overall... Uh, pricing. Let's look at Moil as well. That's a stock which has done very well every time it has increased prices. 384 right now, 5% higher, 384 and uh, the prices again increased but it was expected to increase. NBCC, they have a board meet today so once we have the entire detail, you know, the stock should react to that but 1% higher right now for NBCC, 257. Balrampur Chini in the last few days, entire sugar stock has been in focus but Balrampur Chini also looking for a buyback, 1.6% higher. Vardaman Textile, no point to look at it because it's only 60 to uh, you know shares that have actually got traded so it's not much that you're looking at celebrity fashion not a well traded counter it's up around three three and a half four percent in some of the other movers if uh, you know we can see so bombay dying is up four percent Hathway is up another 5%. These are stocks that are just opening up. And again, these sugar stocks. So whether it's Dampur sugars, whether it's Ugar sugars, all of them uh, seem to be doing well. As far as Nifty is concerned, not much of action. But uh, I think on the other side, the action seems to be pretty strong. So, you know, you have the broader markets which are doing very well. But still early days, uh, just about uh, two odd minutes into the trading session right now. Anisha, any names with volumes that you can pick up? Uh, well, Pankaj, uh, MOIL is up 5% and the volumes are um, uh, more than uh, its, uh, I think, 10-day average. Uh, we're seeing some good buying coming in Bombay dying also. That's up 4%. And some of these high beta names, uh, JP Associates, uh, Unitech, JN Irrigation, Syntex, all of these are started moving today. Even GVK uh, Power is up 3.5%. Uh, Nampur, of course, up 3.5%. Uh, all the sugar stocks are buzzing again. We have, we've seen a lot of action in the sugar space. There is Vishesh Infotex uh, that has been on the losing spree. It's again down 25%, uh, but it's a penny stock and you know, uh, really doesn't have a uh, large uh, recall. We are seeing some profit taking in Vokhart, which is down about 2%, and Idea Seller in Bharti, even Arcom. All the telecom stocks are facing some pressure, uh, marginally lower, not big, big losses being seen there. Um, but uh, really, uh, at this point of time, we are not seeing a very large move coming in on volumes so far. Uh, Gorang, have you had a look at the chart of um, HCL Tech? You know, do you have a view on HCL Tech when you compare it with uh, other uh, large, uh, large uh, IT companies like uh, TCS and Infosys? Do you think this one could be a surprise winner? It is nearly around the 840 levels where, where it has gone a number of times. Would you look at this stock at all? Well, so purely from a uh, fundamental side, uh, well, we are quite uh, positive on the entire IT pack as a disclosure. And the names that uh, features under the IT universe uh, 
आर इन्फोसिस टी सी एस विप्रो एच सी एल टेक टेक महेंद्र माइंड ट्री एन आई टी टेक्नोलॉजीज इन्फो एच नाउ आर सेंस इज दैट एच सी एल टेक आफ्टर द प्राइस करेक्शन एंड अ लॉन्ग टाइम करेक्शन ऑफ कंसॉलिडेशन अंडर परफॉर्मेंस थैंक्स टू द वेरियस लेवल्स एंड टाइम वेन द मैनेजमेंट इज कम आउट एंड गिवन प्रॉफिट वार्निंग्स अर्निंग विजिबिलिटी हर्डल्स एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा and of course uh, don't know what the president elect will do once he is in the uh, oval office in the us uh, well we are we remain positive and we believe that minus us there are opportunities for indian it companies to perform and india itself is going to be a big opportunity both in terms of digital india as well as make in india so if you have a time horizon about year and a half plus Uh, my sense is that uh, from here on your risk reward becomes extremely favorable on the names that i mentioned and your downside also remains protected but yes there could be uh, you know company specific uh, news like we saw in case of infosys one of the top uh, management uh, had put in papers uh, created a little bit of issue then the commentary from the management so those kind of uh, short term uh, hurdles and jerks would be there but longer term we believe all these companies are quite capable of delivering in earnings as well as uh, creating value on your investment manus very quickly your view on hcl tech particularly uh, you know it's revisited the 840 levels very often uh, if this time it manages to cross 840 levels uh, and if volumes are not very supportive would you believe the move would you buy the stock Uh, see, I would like to buy uh, SL Tech only about eight hundred forty, eight hundred forty-five because I think in last uh, uh, four months, uh, uh, I think three times stock uh, tested eight hundred forty, but it could not sustain on higher levels. So I would like to buy SL Tech only if it breaks eight hundred forty-five, eight hundred fifty. Then definitely you can expect the target of uh, around nine hundred seventy-five or maybe thousand rupees. So keep a close watch on uh, SL Tech. If it breaks eight forty, eight fifty, then definitely you can buy it. All right. Uh, Siddharth, uh, uh, what is your view on some of the oil and gas names? A day earlier, we had seen a lot of buzz in some of the oil marketing companies, BPCL, IOC. Both were looking very good. Uh, do you have a view on uh, oil marketing companies? Would you look to invest in any of them? Of course, we like uh, and would like to reiterate on the on the. Uh, optimism that we have we like uh, bpcl from the oil marketing companies if we look at uh, uh, the kind of oil prices because uh, in a month we have seen a 3 to 3 and 1/2 rupees rise in petrol prices for uh, all these companies as well as the diesel prices were also hiked in uh, december month having said that what we believe is bpcl looks good uh, in terms of stronger marketing margins it would be getting even their upstream business has been doing good so what we believe is upstream grms will be also improving because if you look at uh, uh, last 2 uh, months uh, the singapore grms from 2 to 2 and 1/2 dollars have come up to somewhat 7 uh, 8 dollars so what we believe is refining margins also would improve along with that uh, uh, the marketing margins improving so bpcl uh, would be a top pick uh, from the oil marketing companies Gorang, what is your view on oil marketing companies? Uh, do you think that uh, you know, as FIs come back after their holiday, and uh, with the price hikes that they have taken, uh, the the valuation multiples could read it? Well, I don't know when the FIs will come back or not, but I think we should have conviction and confidence, Pankaj. First of all, secondly, I'm extremely excited about the pricing power that uh, is with the oil marketing companies. Unlike earlier times, wherein they were bogged down with subsidy issues and burden. and my view also on crude oil like i've uh, mentioned earlier uh, 55 60 dollar is the max upside uh, yes uh, you know the production free stroke cut has now been put in place uh, by opec non opec nations and the fact also remains pankaj that amongst the non opec nations there are countries and economies which are very very fragile and they only survive on large part of realization for the crude oil exports right. that they do so from that point of view i don't think sustainability is there but yes our topic is bpcl followed by hpcl then followed by ioc and we are equally positive on some of the upstream oil exploration companies as well right and oil producers like reliance is that something which you could believe uh, could do well now 6 7 years of underperformance do you think it can play a catch up role so a uh, long period of consolidation and underperformance like you mentioned but good to see closer to 1100 uh, 
Uh, on debts, you can definitely, uh, as a disclosure, we do our positive on uh, RIL, ONGC and Oil India amongst the upstream or exploration companies. And uh, equally, you know, uh, positive view on Reliance because they have recently uh, enhanced capacities and their technology as far as Jamnagar refinery is concerned. They can refine one of the worst quality and uh, in terms of sulphur content crude oil at Jamnagar facility and uh, realizations are much, much better. Uh, only uh, negativity is the KG D6 uh, operations and like we were discussing earlier, the Reliance Geo launch. Uh, well, otherwise Petcam and other businesses are doing extremely well. 1150, 1165 is the target from a long-term point of view in Reliance. But, uh, you know, as you pointed about Geo and, you know, the sort of cost that they are incurring, once they start to gain traction, they start to, you know, charge for their services and in an appropriate manner, uh, and they have the size that they are talking about, is, could it be a money-making venture and that could surprise the street that cash burn is now behind? <laughs> well, telecom uh, has been always a big bone of contention because of the, you know, like you rightly termed it, money-making venture. Uh, so the, the qu answer to that question, Pankaj, is that how long these free services will continue, point number one. At the end of that uh, free period getting over, what is the entire cost burden that the company has borne? Because there is nothing free. It is free for the subscriber, but the service provider has to pay for it. So what is going to be that quantum? How big is that free service, uh, you know, pileup is going to be? And how soon are they able to, you know, break even? Because remember one thing, once an Indian subscriber is used to something free, you cannot come out with aggressive pricing and try to recover those uh, you know accumulated charges that you were born for the free period in a short span of time and uh, of course competition is uh, you know very big and india is one of the lowest in terms of tariffs in the world and there is also you know this uh, you know spectrum uh, charges that one has to pay so and what i am given to understand and you I, you know you can correct me if i'm wrong i think somewhere close to about 70 or 75000 crore has been spent on this 4g platform of cellular service provider service. so basically there are a lot of unknowns and yeah, there are a lot of unknown and whenever there is, uh, you know, whenever there is no clarity, I think it's best avoidable for this particular business venture. Otherwise, we are paused to on Reliance. Right. Uh, Manas, uh, you know, Gorang was talking about the range of Reliance and how long it has been closer to 1100, 1150. Uh, just looking at the chart, can you just tell us about what price would it give a clear breakout? Uh, <clears throat> see, I think uh, three days back, uh, stock uh, gave a breakout above uh, 1070 mark. But uh, yesterday uh, we witnessed some uh, profit booking. Today also, uh, I think uh, uh, stock is uh, witnessing some profit booking on higher levels. But I think the overall trend, if you're talking about the trend, then definitely the trend is positive. And I still believe that uh, uh, st stock uh, can be bought on uh, lower levels near to 1070, 1060. Keep the stop loss below 1035, and the stock ha still has potential to test 1120, 1125. Right. Uh, Siddharth, what do you do with some of these sugar names? Names like Dwarike Sugar, Ugar Sugars, everything which has got associated with sugar has done very well. Uh, do you think the best is priced, uh, is, is, in, is into the price? Well, to understand sugar, I think we have to recap that two years back, that is 2014-15, we have uh, seen a uh, below normal monsoons and for that the sugar industry's production which was at that point of time of 28 million tons had come down to 25 million tons. So because of that, uh, I think the production has come down and what happened in 2016 is the price forming up. Uh, what we believe is 2017 also would be a year where the price stabilization will be continued and if the production is not increased, I think sugar will... Uh, uh, be a performer as a sector uh, is concerned. Although we don't cover any of the stock in the sugar space, but what we believe is uh, the the least leveraged company that is Balrampur Chini seems okay because uh, here the debt levels are also very high in the industry. So the companies which are aggressively reducing their debt, servicing the debts quite aggressively, I think those companies one should look at and keep an eye on. Although we would not be able to give any kind of a rating on any of the stocks because we don't cover. Right. Uh, Gorang, any view on the sugar stocks? Do you think momentum will continue? Well, I love sugar in my tea and coffee and I don't have diabetes, Pankaj. That's the only thing that you want to say? <laughs> Consume sugar, not buy stocks? Uh, well, uh, in uh, appropriate quantity, of course. But uh, we had a coverage, to put it on record, uh, on Balram Purchini. And our target uh, was somewhere close to about 124, 125. 
and after the open offer at 175 the stock has surpassed and is trading close to about 135 from not mistaken other than that we do not have any coverage and a lot depends you know pankaj on the policies and there is hope building up on the budget that uh, the honorable finance minister will have some good news for this particular industry if you look at the debt on the balance sheet it it boggles me whether this kind of rally is warranted or not point number 1 point number 2 the entire ethanol story well uh, it all depends upon the blending capacity of oil marketing companies to replace naphtha with ethanol and on in terms of realization of uh, ethanol well we've seen uptick in per liter uh, price of ethanol but uh, whether it does that translate into huge revenues for sugam companies i have no idea manas bharat financial is up 2% again any view the way it fell down that is the way it is recovering up uh see now stock is trading above uh, the 61.80% interest level of its uh, previous fall uh, from uh, 730 to 465 so i think now uh, stock is ready to test its uh, 200 day moving average which is placed near to 700 mark so on correction near to 620 or maybe 600 you can take a long call with stop loss of 570. Right. Uh, could you give us a view on JSW Steel? It's got X split today. Uh, looking at the price history, is it possible to give a view? Uh, see, I think last week uh, it made a, a bullish uh, engulfing pattern on the weekly chart. And uh, looking at the uh, that uh, previous price pattern, I think stock uh, uh, can give around uh, 100 to 120 rupees upside move. So definitely uh, after this uh, split, uh, you can take a long call. Now I think uh, the adjusted stop loss uh, should be around 159 and target would be 175. Right. Uh, in terms of uh, JSW Steel Gorang, any view? Metals pack have done phenomenally well. Going into 2017, moderate returns could be expected. Well, I doubt honestly, Pankaj, and the only stock that we had a coverage on was Vedanta and that to target is in place. So, if you want to buy metals, Vedanta is the only stock, but not at current levels, possibly at 180, sub 200 levels. Uh, and another thing is that uh, this entire rally on the metal right from the beginning of 2016 uh, or end of uh, early, I mean, last end of 2015, stocks were trading at 60, 70, 80 rupees. Vedanta, case in point, is now trading at 220. Indalco uh, was trading at about 60 or sub 60 levels. That has moved up. So is the case for Tata Steel as well as GSW Steel. Um, so our sense is that at ground level, we don't see huge consumption theme, at least up until now. Government spending will drive the consumption upwards. But whether that translates into upward pricing of flat and long products, that remains to be seen. And export market, well, China is still dumping left, right and center across the globe. So uh, we would say that you need to be selective in metals. And any correction in the world commodity hard metal basket would translate into price correction over here as well. All right. Um, Manas, do you have a view on BHEL? Yesterday we saw uh, it move up uh, well, uh, but it, it seems we're finding uh, resistance around the previous lows it was making between 120, uh, 123 and 125. Uh, on the charts, uh, what levels do you see for BHEL? Do you think the worst is now behind uh, for this stock? Uh, see, I think we may see some uh, more recovery in uh, BHL because I think last week it made a uh, 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 piercing pattern on the weekly chart and now stock is uh, uh, trading uh, near to the resistance of 126. But looking at the pattern, I think it can break that resistance. Stock can test its 100 day moving average which is placed near to 132. So on uh, on little correction near to 122, 123, you can take a long call because stop loss is uh, quite big. Stop loss should be 117. So on correction, you should buy it and uh, you can set the target of 132, stop loss should be 117. All right, 132 possible on the BHEL, keep a stop loss of 117. Thank you gentlemen for joining us on NDTV Profit and sharing with us your views on the markets and the stocks we've discussed. As you go around, please leave us with the disclosures. Well, thanks for having me on the show. No personal uh, investments in any of the recommendations that have been given by, but we share similar recommendations with our clients as well. Siddharth, your disclosures? Well, whatever stocks we have discussed, I don't have any personal holding on the same, uh, but my organization and clients may be holding. Thank you so much. Manas, your disclosures? Uh, no personal holding in uh, recommended stocks, but uh, we have recommended these stocks to our clients.